Right, hello Year 7, as part of your Easter homework, I have asked you to watch this video. Now, the purpose of this video is to give you a foundational understanding into the topic ratio. Right, as usual, we're going to start off by defining the key words related to this topic, okay? So what I want you to do in a second is pause this video, write down these key words and define them using your own words. Now, if you don't know the meaning, that's okay, you can use the internet, you can use books, find definitions however I want you to rephrase them and uh, in your own words and write these down in your book you can use highlighters to highlight the words uh, and not the definitions please okay so highlight the keywords if you want to and rewrite the definitions in your own words now one additional point I would like to make is that sometimes these words can appear outside of the context of mathematics okay I want you to find a definition that is related to our topic of ratios. Now this is a good time to pause it, write these down, find your own definitions and then you can move on to the next activity. Right, hope you found the definitions of these keywords. Your second activity is to answer three questions. The purpose of these questions is for you to assess how much you already know about ratios. Now I'm not going to give you the answers right now, we will look at them when you return first lesson back. Okay, so I want you to take down these questions, work them out and then bring it back to class on the first lesson back. So pause it, work them out and then we'll have a look at the uh, answers in the class. Right, I'll actually define the first word for you, which is ratio. Okay, so the definition is um, a way of comparing two or more quantities, okay, together. So the definition of ratio is to is a way of comparing two or more quantities together. Okay, so for example, when we're going on a school trip, um, one teacher can take a maximum of ten pupils. Okay, so what we're comparing here is the quantity of teachers the quantity of pupils. Right, we have three main objectives that we want to uh, tick off by the end of this video. The first objective is to be able to use ratio notation, to be able to understand and use ratio notation. Our second objective is to write ratio in its simplest form. Okay, you already know how to do this actually. Um, and the third and final uh, objective is to solve problems using ratios and this is the most important one okay right so ratio notation what do I mean by ratio notation so if we're comparing two or more ratios so two or more quantities in general terms I'm going to be using variables to express them okay a and b both stand for a particular quantity so the way I would read this is the ratio of a to B. So these are colons, and the way we read the colons is 2. So A to B. So for example, if I'm comparing the number of uh, teachers to the number of pupils on a school trip, A can stand for the number of teachers, I said 1 there, and the number of pupils that one teacher can take at max is 10. So that's one uh, example of ratio notation for you. Now in the definition we said that um, it's comparing two or more quantities. So uh, in a particular case, I might be comparing more than two quantities. So what am I going to do? I'm just going to add an additional variable or an additional letter to depict, to express that third quantity. Okay. Now, the second objective is to write ratio in its simplest form. What do I mean by that? Let's look at a few questions. So the first question is for you to write down 4 to 12 in a simplest form. I will do the first one for you and you are required to answer the rest of the questions. Okay, so I've got a ratio of 4 to 12 and I need to simplify this. First step, we need to find the HCF, so highest common factor of both of these numbers, and that is 4. Okay, highest common factor of 4 and 12 is 4. Next, I will be dividing each of these quantities by their highest common factor. So I'm going to divide both of these by 4. 4 divided by 4 is 1. And 12 divided by 4 is 3. So 4 to 12 simplified is 1 to 3. 
Now, like we said, we might be comparing more than two quantities. In this case, it's three. And I'm just going to show you how to simplify that one. So we've got a ratio of 20 to 25 to 15. Well, the rule doesn't change. So you just now need to find the HCF of three quantities. So I've got 20, 25, 15. The HCF is 5. Okay, I'm going to divide each quantity by the HCF. So 20 divided by 5, that is 4. 25 divided by 5, that is 5. And finally, 15 divided by 5, that is 3. So 20 to 25 to 15, simplified, is 4 to 5 to 3. Okay, so now I want you to pause the video, take down the questions, and use this same approach, the same style, and simplify these ratios. And again, I'm not going to provide you with the answers right now. That will take place in class for me to assess your understanding. Okay, our final objective was to be able to solve problems involving ratios. Okay, so we have a problem here. The ratio of chickpeas to broad beans in a hummus recipe is 2 to 9. Jack uses 150 grams of chickpeas. How many grams of broad beans should he use? Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a visual image of this problem and that's exactly the method I want you to use when you're solving ratio questions. Okay, so chickpeas to broad beans, just rewritten it out, the ratio is 2 to 9. Now instead of leaving it um, in number four, I'm going to draw boxes to represent the ratios. And what I mean by that is this. So chickpeas, the ratio is two, so I'm going to draw two boxes to represent that. And then for the broad beans, I'm going to draw nine boxes to represent the ratio. Let me go back to the question now. Jack uses 150 grams of chickpeas. Okay, so these two boxes here represent 150 grams. So the total of these two is 150 grams. Well, if I know that, can I work out the quantity of one box? Of course I can. I just need to divide this quantity here by two, and that gives me 75 grams. That's 75 grams as well. And in total, that gives me 150. Okay, well for the broad beans, I've got nine parts. I need to work out the total of the nine parts. What do I need to do? I just need to multiply 75 grams by nine, and that should give me the amount of broad beans in grams that I should be using. That's also your task to work that out. I don't want you to use a calculator. You can use column method, multiplication, or any other um, method for multiplication. Find out the answer, and we will discuss it in class. Please do not forget to uh, include the units. You will lose a mark, okay, in the exam. Right. What I want you to do now is I've got some questions for you. I want you to attempt these questions and bring them back to class, and we will um, explore the answers in class. Now, you already have uh, the printed version of these, so you don't need to copy it out. Okay, all I want you to do is stick it in and then label your questions one, two, three, four in your book. Show me you're working out and bring it to class. Now, if you can't see the PowerPoint very clearly, don't worry about that. I have attached this, um, so I have put this on Show My Homework so you can access it from there if you want to access the other PowerPoints. But this particular slide, I have already given it to you um, last lesson. Right, thank you for watching the video. See you next lesson.